and ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to talk about the cryopreservation preservation and vitrification protocols in this section. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, the freeze all strategy. Uh, should we do freeze all strategy for all the patients or just in selected group? And uh, the benefits from the freeze all strategy. And also, we will discuss about the clinical outcome of multinucleated embryos. Is it worthwhile vitrify them? Usually, we see the multinucleated embryos, we will not transfer fresh. But sometimes we may cryopreserve. How about the pregnancy outcome when you transfer these multinuclear embryos? And uh, we will discuss the, the closed system for the vitrification. We know uh, we are common use the open system in Asia. And I would like to know uh, which uh, doctor use the closed system in the audience. Can you raise the hand? No. Every use the open system. So the closed system is common in Europe uh, to prevent the contamination or to prevent the disease transmission. But the open system is common use in Asia, I think, uh, because it have a high success rate uh, use in the uh, lab. So uh, we use open system in, in my hospital. But we will discuss about the efficiency of the closed system. And the, uh, we will further discuss about the cryoprotectants used for uh, all site freezing or vitrification. How about the components maybe will affect the survival rate of all sites or even the pregnancy rates. Although the fresh embryo transfer is the norm in IVF, but there's increasing interest using the freezing all strategy. Uh, this means the entire cohort of embryos electively cryopreserved and delay the transfer by frozen embryo transfer. Uh, the, pro the potential advantage of this strategy is the embryo transfer is performed in a more favorable intrauterine environment and also prevent the ovarian hyperstimulation syndromes. And it may improve the, our pregnancy outcome because have the more uh, good uh, endometrial uh, conditions. And overall, the safety, we can change for less embryos. And uh, the purpose of this talk is to evaluate existing evidence, compare frozen embryo transfer with the fresh embryo transfer about the implantation, pregnancy outcome, endometrial receptivity, and the obstetrics perinatal outcomes. So the fresh transfer is associated with improved pregnancy rates compared with the frozen uh, fresh transfer. Frozen transfer is higher with ongoing pregnancy rate. The risk ratio is 1.3 similar to the clinical pregnancy rate. So the meta-analysis showed the frozen embryo transfer increased ongoing and clinical pregnancy rate by just over 30%. Maybe due to the better endometrial environment compared with the fresh cycle. Frozen embryo transfer is associated with Implant, improve implantation rate and also improve libus rate. A retrospective cohort study found that frozen embryo transfer is associated with higher libus rate compared to with the fresh transfer. And the frozen embryo transfer is associated with less ectopic pregnancy rate. The OS ratio is 0 0.35. In one study, frozen embryo transfer was, was associated with 65% reduction in ectopic pregnancy rate compared with fresh embryo transfer. Other studies have also shown 
that frozen embryo transfer also reduce antipartum hemorrhage, placenta previa, and the abrasio placenta. And frozen embryo transfer is associated with a lower risk of preterm birth, small for gestural age, low birth weight. However, the risk of large baby syndrome is increased with frozen embryo transfer compared to with fresh embryo transfer. And the frozen embryo transfer is associated with decrease of the perinatal mortality by 32% compared with the fresh embryo transfer. However, the placenta accreta has been reported increase with frozen embryo transfer compared to fresh transfer. The risk of placenta accreta is increased by 3.24 with frozen embryo transfer. And also, hypertensive disorder are also increased with frozen embryo transfer. So the conclusions, and frozen embryo transfer is associated with lower risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, atopic pregnancy rate, placenta previa, antipart hemorrhage, placenta abruption, preterm birth, small for gestational age, low birth weight, and the perinatal mortality versus fresh embryo transfer. Fresh embryo transfer is associated with lower risk of placenta accreta and the hypertensive tensive disorders and large gestational baby, large weight for gestational baby, gestational age. So the clinical implication is, given the clear benefits of frozen embryo transfer compared to fresh transfer, clinicals should consider a freeze-all strategy for the majority of patients in their clinics. But uh, I think uh, frozen embryo transfer is more common freezing-all strategy. But what is the criteria we do? How, how to decide which patients do the freeze all strategy is according to the follicle number or estrogen level or progesterone level. Maybe different centers have different set points to do the freeze all strategy. Maybe we can discuss later. I think the fresh transfer may be suitable for some patients, for the patient's convenience and the save money. But the frozen transfer uh, especially important for high responders and to reach a very high commodity pregnancy rate in our center. We have 93% ongoing pregnancy rate for the free source strategy for high responders. The second talk is co uh, talk about the clinical outcome of multinucleate embryos This is a retrospective studies doing the single embryo transfer. When the embryo had multinucleation observed on day one, early cleavage stage, or day two or day three embryos, we found the multinucleations. The multinucleations were further categorized uh, into the severity. The K2 means the two nuclei uh, in less than 50% blastomere. K3 means more than two nuclei uh, in less than 50% blastomere. K4 means um, more than two nuclei in more than 50% blastomeres. The outcome measurements is clinical pregnancy rates and the implantation rates and the with habits. The outcome will further uh, compare according to the type and the date of multinucleation observed. Results showed the clinical pregnancy rate and implantation rates were significantly higher after we do the day five vitrification 
compare with the day three. The Brussels sister transfer have higher pregnancy rates than the day three uh, embryos frozen. And the type of the uh, multinucleations and the day of the evaluation were not significant the difference in clinical pregnancy rate and the implantation uh, rates. You can see here, the type and the day of observation has no significant difference. The embryo which you find on day three, they show multinucleation on day one had a higher clinical pregnancy rate. You can see here, the higher clinical pregnancy rate when nuclear multinucleation observed on day one. But this difference was not observed for embryos which find on blastocyst that have similar pregnancy rates. Uh, have no significant difference between the day of observation with multinucleation. A conclusion, multinucleated embryos may have a good implantation potential, especially when cultured up to day five. So we still uh, deserve to preserve the multinucleated embryos. For embryos cultured up to day three, a higher implantation rate was found when the multinucleation was seen on day one compared with day two or day three. The clinical implication is it seems preferable to culture multinucleated embryos up to day five and selective vitrify them and develop to Brussels cysts. When cryopreservation is preferred, performed on day three, selection criteria should be taken into account which day multinucleation was detected. Since day one multinucleated embryos show the highest implantation potential. Uh, this paper talk about uh, the on clinical pregnancy rate. Uh, I checked the literature. There are several libraries has been reported in the literature from the multinucleated embryos. So when we see the multi-nuclear embryos, maybe we can preserve, especially develop to the Brussels cyst instead of discarding them. And then we talk about the closed system and open system for vitrification. These papers, uh, investigate the clinical outcome of day two, day three, or day five embryos vitrified with a closed system. Vitrification is used for cryopreservation of surplus embryos or freezing or strategy for risk of ovarian hyperstimulation or impair endometrial pattern. The closed system and open systems are now available commercially. However, there are concerns that there is a slower cooling rate in closed system. They may affect embryo viability development. So the purpose of this study is to assess outcome after closed system of day two, day three, day five embryos to test whether the day of embryo vitrification or the methods of endometrium preparation affects pregnancy outcome. This is a retrospective study of vitrify with a closed system. The good quality surplus embryos were vitrified using the Irvine vitrification kit, high security stores is a closed system on day of embryo, such as day two, day three, day four. After warming, embryos were cultured for 24 hours before transfer in a natural cycle or in a hormone replacement uh, cycle. The results show the post-warming survival rate was similar for day two or day three embryos in this closed system but lower in the 
blastocyst embryos. So the survival rate is about 70% for the uh, blastocyst in the closed system since lower than the open system we commonly use. Usually, maybe in our open system, it's about 95% survival for the blastocyst. The basic clinical outcome was seen after transfer of one blastocyst. The blastocyst, uh, sorry, pregnancy rate is higher than the day three or day two pregnancy rate. Conclusions, 24 hours post-warming survival rates were similar for day two or day three embryos, but tended to be lower for blastocyst vitrification in a closed system. Vitrification with a high security closed system ensure high implantation rates after warm embryo transfer in an unselected patient group. Transfer of warm day five blastocyst produce higher implantation and live birth rate than transfer of day two or day three embryos. Similar implantation rates were seen when embryos were transferred in a natural cycle or hormone replacement cycle. The clinical implications, when enough good quality embryos are available, it may be advisable to prolong culture to Brussels cyst and to vitrify. Because of a higher pregnancy rate per transfer. The last talk is about the vitrification and cryoprotectance mediums in the slow freezing and the vitrification for all sites. About the survival rate, implantation rate, and pregnancy rate from the USA with the hope registry uh, data is an uh, all-site uh, donation, used the frozen all-site donation program. The efficiency of all-site cryopreservation has been improved in recent years, but more clinical data on the effect of cryoprotectants on all-site cryopreservation outcome are already deserved. The HOPE registry was a prospective phase four multi-center observational registry in USA. The purpose of this study is to investigate all size survival rates, embryo quality, implantation, and pregnancy rates for all size donation program cryo preserved, either by slow freezing or vitrification. According to the cryoprotectants used for freezing or sawing, we would they will analyze this. Post hoc analysis of cryoprotectants used in the phase four prospective multi center observational registry of HOP. Data from 136 patients receiving the don frozen donor oocyte donation. And the frozen methods, including slow freezing, of vitrification, and the patient cycle data were collected. The results show the cycle level implantation rate and clinical pregnancy rate different significant among com cryoprotesis combinations for freezing or vitrification for both slow freezing and vitrification. For the slow freezing, the same with the propane diode and sucrose have higher all size survival rate, implantation rate, and clinical pregnancy rate. For vitrification, we're using the DMS or sucrose or acyl glycol has good survival rate, implantation rate, and clinical pregnancy rate. Cycle level all size survival rates Difference significant among combination of the cryopotentants for 
freezing or vitrification for both slow freezing and vitrification. So the cryoprotectants components will affect the oocyte survival rates for freezing and vitrification. And cycle level implantation rate and clinical pregnancy rate is not different significantly among combination of cryopotents used for sawing. So the sawing, oh sorry, the sawing cryopotents do not affect the implantation rate and clinical pregnancy rate. Cycle level oocyte survival rates are different significant among the cryopotents used for sawing in the slow freezing. So the slow freezing, the cryoprotectants for the propane diode with sucrose have higher survival rate compared with the sucrose only for sawing. And the clinical pregnancy rate was higher in the vitrification compared with the slow freezing. So the conclusion, implant, implantation rate and clinical pregnancy rate different by cryoprotectants combinations uh, for, for freezing and vitrification in both slow freezing and vitrification cycle, but not for sawing warming in slow freezing uh, cycles and vitrification cycles. All side survival rates are different by cryoprotectants used for freezing and vitrification in slow freezing and the vitrification. The clinical implication means recently vitrification has become a more widely used cryopreservation technique than slow freezing. Different cryoprotectants could potentially influence outcome from ART cycles that use slow freezing or, or vitrification. The summary, the first talk, uh, given the clear benefits of frozen embryo transfer versus fresh embryo transfer, clinicals should consider a freezing O strategy for majority of patients in their clinics. Multinuclear embryos may have a good implantation potential and also have case reports reported with a live birth. Especially we can culture to Brussels cyst and freeze. It's useful. Vitrification with a high security closed system ensure high implantation rate after wound embryo transfer in an unselected patient population. Closed system have the benefits well to prevent uh, uh, some contamination maybe. Uh, different cryoprotectants could potentially influence outcome from ART cycles use slow freezing and vitrification. So cryoprotectant components is important to achieve a higher oocyte survival rate and the pregnancy rate. Okay. Thanks for your attention.